chase my dream. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I am Transparently D, where I'm keeping it 100% transparent in the life of D. Good morning, family. How are you doing? How's your day going? How's your week been? Are you ready for your weekend? Good morning, everyone. I am here to um, just do a update um, on what's going on and where I am, what's my status right now. I am also gonna answer questions. I um, posted up on my Instagram channel and I said, um, you know, what are some questions that you would like for me to answer? And I'll be 100% um, honest and transparent um, on the questions. So if you're not following me on my Instagram page, please follow me on IG. It is Life with Dee Dee. Okay, so today I am en route to um, the appointment that I absolutely hate the most. And that is my baseline appointment. So for those who don't know what baseline is, baseline is where, okay, so when you're doing a vitro fertilization, you call the the office on day one so when you have a flow of blood and I know that's a terrible word. when your cycle begins um, you um, call the office and you say hey, look, today is cycle day one and then they say okay we're gonna book you for your baseline appointment the baseline appointment is labs including the HCG to make sure that you're not pregnant um, and uh, an ultrasound now that's the part that I don't like because you still, you know, have a flow. And so you're flowing and it's a vaginal ultrasound. So they have to go like up in you um, to get the lining, to see the lining and see how thick or thin the lining is. We like to see that the lining is thin um, by the time you come to baseline and um, your labs are low. So that's what they're basically looking for. So last time with Skylar at my baseline appointment, my lining was still at 15 millimeters, which means it was super thick. Um, some women lining don't even get to 15, like when they're taking the medication and things of that nature, because they have they have infertility issues. But for me, that's not one of my that's not one of my issues. Lining isn't necessarily an issue for me, if I can use those terms. Um, so that's what I'm on my way to now. I'm on my way to, to do my, my baseline, and I will um, let you guys know how that go. Cycle day one was the 9th of February, and today is the 11th of February. Um, and typically at baseline, they start you on the medications as well. And I have started the antibiotics. So another thing with Dr. Kilt says he's real big on getting rid of any um, infection, any type of infection, even antivirals. They even put you on antiviral medications and everything. Dr. Kilt is very aggressive with um, making the the wound very habitable. So a lot of doctors are against that, but I am 100% for that. I, I am 100% for that. In my profession, you would not believe how many women end up not, their embryos not taken, or um, they have an early miscarriage, and, and typically it's related to they had some type of infection. And it's so hard to like tell them that, you know? It's so hard to tell people that your baby died because essentially it's your baby. You know, your baby died because you had a UTI. Or your baby died because you had an overgrowth of hormones in your uterus. Or you had extra bacteria or flora in your uterus, so that's why your um, embryo did not take, you know. So a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not going to take all those meds. I'm not doing that. Oh, my God. <laughs> so they 
they'll take it but then when they transfer their embryos in and it doesn't take and then you know you're like oh my god what happened i did everything right everything was perfect and i don't understand why it didn't work well you had the overgrowth of bacteria or you had an overgrowth of a, of a virus and it was not cured so your your embryo could not implant in that perfect environment that you had been building over the last 20 days you know but unfortunately we have to break that news the, the clinic that I personally work with um, they don't give their patients antibiotics my clinic that I go to for my treatment does we get antifungal medication, antibacterial medication, antiviral medication, and I am all for it. I take it all because I know my transfer is going to work. I have so much faith, I'm telling you. I saw a post on um, Facebook that I shared that said, you have to have, you have to believe so much that it already feels like you got it. Come on, somebody. Now, that'll preach all across the pulpit. You, and I just, I posted it. I reposted it, but I changed it. I said, I have so much faith that I already feel like I'm breaking up. And I do. Honest to God. Like, I, that's truly how I feel. So, um, that's where I'm going this morning. That's what I'm up to. Let's get into this hair, y'all. Don't worry. No edges was harmed in the making of these braids because this is a wig, sis. Yes, honey. Get into it, honey. This is a wig. And I, y'all know this is not a, a beauty channel. I don't do the beauty thing. Thank you for everybody who's subscribing to me. Welcome to this crazy journey with this 41-year-old who's becoming a mom all over again to little kids you know um i appreciate you all welcome 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 on this journey of life you all are now officially my cousins we are family and we act like family over here if you comment and say something to me um down below i will most definitely respond to you i try to respond to everybody who is um who's commenting good bad or indifferent the only thing that I have a zero tolerance for is my kids. When you coming for my kids, or you saying something derogatory um, about my children, that will immediately get you blocked. I will immediately block you because I'm not. I'm not. I'll get to that because that's one of the questions that they asked on here. Um, so I, I'm just not for it. I will block you and call it a day when it comes to my kids so please don't just don't come at my kids now you can give me advice because my my baby is one but my baby before my baby is going to be 15 so it has been years since i had little kids you know so you know give me all the advice y'all can i'm on board to take a village to raise a child and i need all my village to be on board please and thank you okay so um what was i saying the questions let's get to the questions i wrote them down girl because i i forget stuff okay so question so a lot of i had a lot of the same questions that were just worded differently so i just kind of like compact them together and and um and um i might answer all the questions okay but let me for a second see where I am and then I'll be right back. Hold on. Okay, y'all, I'm back. Let's answer these questions, fam. Okay, so question number one, the most people ask me this question. Like, I had probably like 50 people ask this same question. And it's good. I'm on, I'm on board with it. It says, are you a single mother? That is a great question. No, I have a whole man. <laughs> I have a whole man, a whole big man, whole big old protector, honey. No, I I am not going. So one of the young ladies said, am I doing IVF as a single mother on purpose? I forgot what wording she used. Um, It, it was like, um, 
single mother by choice that's what it was that's the question well am i a single mother by choice since my children are older and then i'm doing this over again am i doing this for me or or not no ma'am i got a whole man okay whole man and um the reason i'm doing this is because he doesn't have any children well he does now he got skylar skylar's his only baby so um we went through this to um make him a father so no i'm not a single mom um when did you know you needed ivf to have children and were all your children ivf children very 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 good question um no, my children are not in vitro fertilization children. Only Skylar is. Um, after I had my 15-year-old, I decided that I was done having kids. And I was over it. And, um, and a lot of times we make permanent decisions based on temporary situations. So it wasn't even that I was done having children. I was done having children with my ex-husband. And um, now, let me say this. My ex-husband is a great father to his children now. He's an awesome man. We have a great, um, not even co-parenting because our children are all grown now. Our kids are 26, 22, 21. Um, wait, 26, 22, 21, 15. So it's not even like a, a co-parenting relationship. It's more like he's my friend. He he is like really my friend. Like he um, had like some situations going on, um, and I went to Florida. Like he is my friend. I um, I don't love him. He doesn't love me, but he is my friend. We could not, and I think that's what I lost in our marriage. I lost him as my friend. I lost him as my protector. Instead of him being my protector, I'm going to say this real lightly. Instead of him being my protector, I needed to be protected. And he was no longer my friend. Um, so anyway, long story short, um, my older kids were naturally conceived. I never had an issue with getting pregnant. I never had an issue with, um, you know, having kids or anything of that nature. Um, I chose to get my tubes tied. And then I had a very bad reaction to that hormonally. And so then I got them reversed. Um, and uh, we were able to get pregnant naturally. Um, and I ended up losing them. So I just said, forget that. I'm just going to just go straight to, um, you know, having in vitro fertilization. So that's why I'm doing IVF because I chose a permanent decision based on a temporary situation. So no, all of my kids are not IVF. Skylar is my first IVF baby and these babies will be my second and third IVF babies. Okay. Third question said, you said in several videos that you were or are mean. Why are you mean and are you mean to your kids? Good question. Why am I mean? I, the easy answer is I don't know, but that's not the honest answer. The honest answer is I've been through a lot, a whole lot um, in my childhood. And I think that that's where it, it began um, in my childhood. And I think I did not have the support for the feelings that I was having as a child. So I buried them. And um, I would just bury how I felt, buried, 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 buried. And then one person, and I could never even tell like who the person would be or anything, but like one something would happen or one person would say something to me or do something wrong and I would explode. 
and all of those feelings that I had been hiding and I had been, um, you know, just suppressing would just come out on that one person. And that was very unfair. That was very unfair. Um, but that's how I, I dealt with a lot of things in life. And now that I'm older, I um, I communicate more. I just tell you how it is. I'm going to tell you exactly how I feel. I'm not going to sugarcoat nothing. I'm gonna not going to bury it down in my stomach. And then I end up going off. Um, second half of that question said, am I mean to my kids? I don't think I'm mean. I don't think I was mean to them. I think I um, was very authoritative. I am an authoritative parent. Like, I am not your friend. My 26, almost 27 year old will tell you, I still tell him that to this day, I am not your friend. I am your mother. You're not gonna curse around me. You're not, we, we're not gonna hang out together. We're not gonna, you know, do all kind of crazy stuff together like I'm not your friend I am your mother and until I take my last breath it is my job to parent you and that's what I do so am I mean to my kids not necessarily no I don't think I'm mean to them I think I'm very authoritative and when I say something I mean just what I said and I mean for you to do it the way I saw you doing it in my head when I told you to do it and that's that's fact like that's what I mean um now Let's get to Stasi. Cause see, that's the younger Didi. That's mama, young mama Didi. <laughs> 41 year old Didi. As a mom. Girlfriend. I ain't nothing like that. I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm that Skylar gets away with murder. And like I don't know if it's because I'm older now or if it's um it was it just took so much for us to get pregnant for her, with her um or if she just got me wrapped around her little peaky like but that girl does not get in trouble for anything she don't get in trouble she don't get yelled at or nothing like she's just a baby and she's just like she don't get in trouble she does so much godly she falls out and like my older kids could not fall out don't be falling out on me in the store you cutting up in the store don't do it don't do it don't do it i'm i'm that parent that you can definitely call uh defects on and i open my door for them like i'm that parent i used to be that parent now that girl got me wrapped around her pinky i ain't gonna even tell y'all no lie she fall out i'd be like whatever you want girl what do you want here you can have it <laughs> I just get it to him. That's so bad. God, that's so bad. And then her dad does too. So it's like so bad. Like I know that we're making a monster. Like that's it's so freaking bad, man. Oh my God, it's so bad that we do her that way. But you know, she is just a baby, and she just look at me with those big brown eyes, honey, and I melt. I ain't gonna tell no why. I melt. I was trying to do her hair uh, last week. And I had given her a boiled egg. As soon as I put the egg in her hand, she just squeezed the egg. Now, mind you, she's on my bed. <laughs> she just squeezed it and crumbled it up and put it all on the bed. And then she started rubbing it like that and putting it all over the place. I was just like, she take her bow box and she just flip it over and dump all the stuff out. I'm folding up clothes, right? I'm on the floor folding up clothes, okay? And as I'm folding up the clothes, she's taking them and she's unfolding them and throwing them. But I'm watching the TV, not really paying attention. And now I turn around and look at all the folded clothes are thrown on the floor. I was just like, girlfriend. And she just laughed and thinking it's so funny. And I just, I was like, okay, whatever. She doesn't get in trouble for anything. So I'm a softy when it comes to Skylar. I was tough on my older kids. I am not like that anymore. I don't even know how to get back to that stage anymore. <laughs> so I don't know. No, I'm not reading my kid. I'm just authoritative. Okay. Do you feel like you are a different parent at this age than when you were younger? Oh, I just answered that. Absolutely. I feel like I'm a different parent. I'm totally, totally different parent now than what I was back then. Back then, I was just very stern. 
and I set expectations and you need to meet them. Now I'm just like, whatever you want to do, style. What you want to do, baby? And then, boom, that's what we do. So I'm very different as a parent now. Okay. How do you build your faith when so much is going on in life? That's a very good question. Um, I think faith comes by hearing of the word. And I stay in the word. I stay listening to um, positive things on uh, YouTube or positive things on Facebook or positive things on IG and um, just, you know, listening to sermons and um, listening to Colette Williams. I stay just keeping myself in the word because that builds your faith. Sometimes I be listening to people preach or I be listening to um, gospel music or you know I hear something like that saying that I that I heard up there. You gotta have so much faith that you that it feels like you already got it. Like stuff like that be making me want to get the enemy and put him in a headlock and, and, and whoop him and his mama. You understand me? Like I need that and it refuels me every single time. It refuels me and it gives me the push to continue to go on. So the Bible speaks about the carnal eye. The carnal eye is what you see right now. Right now, it may not look like your relationship will work. Right now, it may not look like you're going to be able to pay your bills. Right now, it may not look like you're going to be able to mend that relationship with your parents or with your friend. It may not look like you can take that deep breath in and exhale, but that's your carnal eye showing you that. It needs to be your faith that supersedes that, that say, I don't care what this look like, I am going to have my twins. I don't care what this look like, I am going to have my husband. I don't care what this look like, I am going to be able to have money in my savings account. You got to speak those things that are not as though they were and they will manifest. I'm telling you, you got to be mindful of your tongue. And when you pray, you have to pray with no doubt. When I pray, when I pray, God move. Because when I pray, I don't have no doubt. I know it's just like when you a kid and you want something from your dad. What do you do? You go to your dad and you ask him, Daddy, can I have $10? You know, daddy give you $10. Well, God is my father. You know, my, my biological father has passed on. May he rest in peace. I love you, daddy. Way he passed like that. You know, God is my father. So, I'm not going to say, well, daddy, you know, I, I was just trying to see if possibly you had it. And you know, that's okay. That's okay if you don't. But if you if you could possibly see if you can give me. And, no, I'm not doing that when I go to my daddy. When I go to my daddy, daddy, let me get $10. And that's how I go to Jesus. I talk to Jesus just like I talk to y'all. Jesus. <laughs> I don't know what you got these people going through on this job. But I ain't doing it today. Silence them. And that's exactly what he does. He does. And I and when I ask, I know it's done. So you just got to just keep yourself around positive things. If you're around a bunch of negative things or you see a bunch of negative posts, let me tell you what I want y'all to do. I want you to, with an open mind, just scroll through your Instagram. Scroll through your Facebook. Scroll through your YouTube. And if you see a bunch of negative stuff coming up, that's what you're putting out. You're putting that negative stuff out into the atmosphere. And that's why it's coming back. If you're only searching for positive things, the only positive things are going to come. But if you're, certain, if you're searching for black girls fighting the projects of Louisiana, then don't be shocked when you're getting all those negative things that are coming up because that's what you're putting out. Okay. Mm, it says, what is your view on COVID-19? Okay. I'm going to put my nurse hat on for this. As a nurse, um, COVID-19 is a very serious virus. I think it needs to be taken serious. I think that people should um, wash their hands, not wear gloves, not wear gloves, do not wear gloves, don't wear gloves. But you do need to wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Stay six feet away from me, people. We're not in middle school, and even if you are in middle school, you don't have to whisper in somebody's ear. You don't need to be that close to them. Stay six feet apart from them. And um, 
wear your mask because we have a COVID where you feel a little sick or whatever, but you pop up out of it. And we have COVID pneumonia. COVID pneumonia is what's killing people. And you don't know what strain you'll get or how bad it will get for you, but you gotta wash your hands. You gotta wash your hands. You gotta wash your hands. And stay six feet, wear your mask, but you need to live life. You have been blessed to have life there is somebody who did not make it to see today and they wish that they had so you have to live life you can't live like you're dead while you're still alive that's unfair you gotta live life so am i gonna go visit my sister absolutely am i gonna visit my my 80 something year old cousin you better bet your last dollar you know am i gonna celebrate birthdays and and, and holidays absolutely i am i'm not gonna live like i'm dead am i gonna fly yes am i gonna travel absolutely but i will do it in a responsible manner where i'm not getting sick or getting my kids sick or getting my family sick or my patients sick or anything like that, you know? So, yes, um, I do think it's serious. I do think you need to uh, take all the precautions, but I think that you need to remain six feet apart from people and live your life and don't live your life like you're dead. My opinion. Okay. <laughs> have you ever had a threesome? Absolutely not. No, I have never had a threesome um, because um, the question said, have you ever had a threesome? And if not, would you consider doing a threesome with me? <laughs> You're funny. No, I don't want to do a threesome because I don't like to share. And I don't want to share my man with nobody. I'm going to just be honest with you. No, I don't. I've never done a threesome. I don't have any intentions on doing a threesome. Um, I would look at Tiny and T.I. I'm not bringing anybody into my bedroom. So the answer to your question is no. Um, what do you feel about people who don't believe in Jesus? Um, believe in them as a person? I, I mean, I mean, how do I feel about them as a person? I have They're just they're people, just like everybody else. Um, my feelings towards them is fear. I'm very afraid for people who don't believe in Jesus because the Bible says that that's the only sin that um, Jesus won't forgive. Um, so I would rather, for me, I would rather live my life like there is a God than to die and find out, and, and to die and find out that there, there's not one, than to live my life like there is not a God and then I die and find out that there is one. So I believe in Jesus. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he rose on the third day with all power in his hand. That is my belief. Do I force that belief on people? No, but I, if you're around me, I'm going to tell you about the goodness of Jesus. And if you don't want to hear it, then you have to get from around me because that's that's who I am. That's what I believe and that's what I speak, you know. So um, I, I don't feel no kind of way about them. I love them all. I love all people, even my haters. Mwah. Um, how do you feel about gay or lesbian people and them having kids? I love all people. Gay, straight, lesbian. I always get this term wrong, so please forgive me if I get this term wrong. LGBTQ plus? That's probably wrong, but I'm sorry. I love them all. I'm all for it. I love them. If you, that's your lifestyle, you know, the Bible speaks against it. But I cannot, I, I have a friend um, that I went to school with. And in elementary school, we knew this, this gentleman was, was gay. And this was back in the day when people didn't, you know, open up about being gay and stuff like that. By middle school, we knew for sure he was gay. So are people born gay? I don't know. I don't know if people necessarily are born gay. But what I do know is that I um, I don't have no feelings whatsoever towards them, uh, like in a negative way at all. And I have um, 
there is a um there is a couple that that um a lesbian married couple who I told about CMY and I helped them through the whole um I helped them through the whole um process and everything and they had a beautiful baby little girl. They got a little girl. I love her so much. So I don't have any ill feelings towards people who are in same sex marriages or relationships and have kids. That's I, I can't I have no stone to throw at nobody. If I throw some stones at you trying to tear down your glass house, my whole house built of glass, it's gonna crumble. So I don't have I don't have any um feelings towards that not negative feelings towards that at all shoot for it go for it if you give your male on male couple get your surrogate get your smegs and, and and do your thing all kids need to be loved you know and um that's how i feel about that okay will we ever get to meet your better half i don't know because number one he does not like to be in front of the camera that he, that's just not him. That's just not who he is or, or what he likes. He just doesn't. Um, and uh, just like I'm very protective of my children. I'm very protective of him. And I know that everybody who, he, who, who says they like you don't. You know, and everybody who says they want to see the best for you don't. So... I don't know. That it would totally have to be his choice. Like he would have to want to get in front of the camera for me to um, put him on. I would not um, enforce that on him or or try to make him feel like he has to get on the camera or whatever. Um, it would have to be something that he would have to initiate uh, because I know he doesn't like to be on camera. How's Skylar doing? Skylar is doing well. I just took her to um, the nanny. Skylar is doing awesome. She's very smart. She's very playful. She's eating again. Uh, she is missing one of her tooth uh, because of the tragic accident that took place at the daycare. Um, but she is doing fine. She's a big girl and she's 15 months old. She's about 25 pounds. She's very lean, very tall. Um, baby uh, and she is rotten to the core. I'm telling you that's a riot baby. She rotten. I ain't gonna even tell you no lie. But Skylar is doing great. Um, do you have a P.O. box to send Skylar stuff? I do. And I don't know the address right off hand. Unfortunately I'm so sorry. I will put the P.O. box down below if you want to um, send Skylar anything. Um, what 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 babies am I to have? You know, by all means, you don't have to. I'm not asking for anybody to send anything, but you know, if you want to send stuff to the PO box, I will link it down um, below, and you can send um, whatever you like. To be honest with you. Um, okay. Um, do you still talk to the guy who killed his child and her mom? No. I don't converse with him at all. I have not talked to him since that situation happened. Um, I have no idea. When they asked me this question, I um, actually went onto the website just to see how much time he got. That's just how detached I was. I didn't even know, you know, what his sentence was. But he was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. That's his official conviction. I mean, um, sentence. Um, so no, I don't. I don't converse with him or anything attached to him, period. Okay. How much did you pay for IVF? Okay, so we did the stacking method where we do egg retrievals back to back um, to get all the embryos that we would need and then we start transferring in. So I only did two rounds of in vitro fertilization because I didn't want to have a bunch of embryos stored um, and I know I'm not going to donate them to anybody. I just can't imagine somebody else raising my child, you know. And no, I'm not going to um, destroy them. I just can't do that. So we only did two so that we can have um, the embryos for Skylar and for the 
boys and then um, I'm uncertain on what we're going to do with the last one that we have left at this point. Um, so, oh, cost. So, with travel to New York, hotels, food, uh, we did PGS testing. That was an extra $1,800. Um, oh, I did a PRP wash, HCG wash. Total, I think we spent about $11,000. For two rounds. Now, my job here wanted to charge me thirty thousand dollars per round. So that means I would have had to pay sixty thousand dollars, and that's not even including any of the add-ons. That's not including the PRP wash. That's not including the uh, ACG wash. That's not including PGS testing. That's not including any of that. That's just straight just getting made. So. Instead of me paying sixty thousand dollars, I spent about eleven thousand dollars. Okay. Uh, what are your real thoughts on on CMY fertility? I absolutely love CMY fertility. Love, 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 love CMY fertility. I um, love their motto and their mission. Their motto is um, making. I always forget it. It is, hold on, y'all. Yeah. Okay. Their motto is making priceless affordable. And he really is. Because my job is totally different from CNY Fertility. I absolutely love CNY Fertility. I absolutely love the nurses, the staff members. I love Dr. Kiltz. Dr. Kiltz is like a little, uh, you gotta call him little because he's so short. Bless his heart. Um, he's like a little fireball of energy. <laughs> of positive energy. And I mean, I just love him. I love his energy. I love everything about him. I hands down give CNY Fertility a, a strong nine. I'm talking about a strong nine. And the only reason why I'm not giving them a 10 is because they really need to weed out the negative patients and increase their pay, their rates, because what they do for people is, is a lot. Okay. What college did you attend and did you play at John Yard? I attend, I went to, um, I went to the great. Bethune Cookman University. <laughs> and no, I did not pledge on yard. I didn't pledge on yard because um the sorority I wanted to um pledge on was suspended off yard. And when they did come back on yard, I was not prepared. So I um I could not um pledge. So no, I didn't pledge on yard. Okay. Hold on, y'all. Let me try that. Let me see where I'm going. Let me see where I'm going. I'm at disappointment. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Okay. Is your hair natural? And if so, how long have you been natural? And will you be doing hair natural hair videos? Yes, my hair is natural. Um, I've been natural for five years. No, I will not be doing any um, natural hair videos because I don't know how to do my hair. Okay. Where is this door? Like, what are they doing here? Um, um, so no, I don't know. Oh, there you go. Okay. No, I don't know how to do. I don't know how to do my natural hair. I know how to retain length. My hair is very long. It's probably this long. My natural hair is probably there. Um, I know how to retain length. I know how to keep it moisturized. I know how to uh, put it away. Um, as far as like doing styles and natural hair videos and stuff like that, I'm not your girl. Mm -mm. I don't know how to do it. So, no, I probably won't be doing a natural hair. I may be doing my hair while I'm doing a video, but it won't be a, a hair video at all. Because, girl, I can't do it. What is your zodiac sign? I am a full-blooded, 100%. Everything you know about them is me, Scorpio. Wholeheartedly. Um, and the Chinese zodiac, I am a sheep. And everything that you read about a sheep on the Chinese Zodiac, that is me too, a hundred percent. Um, have you always been in church? And will this be your last child or children? 
this will be my last set of kids. My two boys are gonna be my last babies. I'm not gonna do this anymore. This is it. That's why I don't know what we're gonna do with the girl embryo that we have left. Um, and um, I've been born and bred in church. I think my mama left the hospital and went to church. I've been in church my whole life. When I was coming up, we went to church on Sunday morning, came back Sunday night, Monday night prayer, Wednesday night midweek service, Friday night in the week service, Saturday we um, sold pies and cookies and stuff like that at church, and um, and Saturdays, sometimes when I was at my dad's mom's house, I would go to church on Saturdays too. So honey, I was born and bred in church, loved the Lord, that's all I know is Jesus, and Jesus is all right with me. How about that? So yes, I've been in church my whole life. <laughs> I've been in church my whole life, y'all. My whole life I've been in church. Um, okay, so I am at my appointment, and I will talk to y'all when I get back. Okay, y'all, I'm done um, rambling. But one thing, um, can I have a straw? Like a real straw, yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. You're awesome. Thank you. Ma'am? Oh no, it's all good. Yeah, I just like to drink it out the straw. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna be good. Okay, this is what I wanted to say. So they have something that's called preconceptions. I didn't know anything about these preconceptions, okay? So preconception is like a whole list of where is that? Because I intentionally got a copy of it. A whole list of labs that you have to take. And I wanted to tell you guys this because if you are following me and you are considering in vitro and you don't have the insurance coverage, then this is what you would have to pay, my dear. Hold on, let me pull over. These are your conceptions that you have to take before you even start anything so it's for the cny baseline testing that's the estrogen fsh progesterone hcg and the lh is 125 dollars but on top of that you have to get the the preconception testing which is the prolactin vitamin d rubella testosterone tsh and amh that's an additional 150 dollars and then you have the lab court preconception panel, which is your CBC, CMP, hepatitis C, hepatitis B, HIV, your ABO with RH, that's just your blood type, um, your antibody screen, which is a, it, what type of antigen, if you're A positive, or if you're positive or negative, it's the antigen, um, on it, varicella and RPR. I don't know what RPR is. That's an additional. 163 and then I added on the hemoglobin a1c which is an additional twenty two dollars and eighty three cent see that a1c twenty two eighty four because I wanted to know what my a1c was my insurance thank God pays for it however if your insurance does insurance does not pay for it, you got to pay 125, 150 plus 163 for these labs. Thank God my insurance pays for it, and I don't have to um, do that. Okay, so at the appointment today, the young lady um, says that um, my lining is thick. It's like almost 12. And so she was like, I don't know, I have to talk to Dr. B about that. You know, she's like, how many days do you normally, you know, stay on your cycle? And I was like, probably like anywhere from five to seven days. Today is already day three, you know. Um, so she was like, okay, because your lining was a little thick. And I was like, yeah, it's always thick. I said last time it was thick as well. My baseline um, at the last, when I transferred my daughters, um, was 15.8, I want to say. I want to say it was 15.8 um, but we still continued on I said by the time I transferred I want to I want to say it was 28.5 
when I transferred them in. I said, so I always have a, a thick lining. And she was like, I don't know. Let me talk to Dr. B about it. Let me talk to Dr. B about it. And so I said, okay, go ahead and talk to Dr. B, Chai. And um, thank God for Dr. Kilts. I love Dr. Kilts. He is amazing. Dr. Kilts had already put in um, notes on my account. And he had already um, said that my lining is thick. That I um, am going to use the same protocol that I used before. And that I want to transfer in two embryos. So he had already put it in there. So when she went to go talk to Dr. V and Dr. V um, read the note, she was like, okay, well, she can just start her meds just like they do, um, um, just like they did last time. So I'm going to start all of my meds on tomorrow, um, which I was going to do anyway, because that's what my calendar that he sent me um, said for me to do. And um, I am well on my way to bring you home the boys all right you guys that's it that's all i got for you today i'm just gonna go home and work i'm working from home today so i'm gonna go home and work and try to squeeze in me a nap on my lunch break all right y'all know how we do it here always strive to be on top because the bottom is already too crowded and keep your faith on fleet peace Everything alright, everything alright I'ma chase my dreams, everything go right Everything go right, I'ma chase my dreams Everything alright, everything alright I'ma chase my dreams, everything alright Everything